The Octonaut and the Growing Goldfish, written by Miami. It was a sunny morning under the golden ocean when Shellington Sea Otter was digging for fossils. Professor Inkling was listening to music. Captain Barnacle's Pier was building a model. Tweak Bunny was playing her banjo. Quasi Kitten was swabbing the decks. Peso Penguin was examining a patient. Tunip the Vegemore was eating breakfast. And Dashy Dog was urgently calling the octopod. Alert! 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 Each octonaut made their way swiftly to the octopod's HQ, as Dashy greeted them from a monitor. I was taking photos in a nearby park when I met Donkey, she said. He's a goldfish who's grown so much he doesn't fit in his pond anymore. We need to move him quickly. This sounds like a chance to try out my new invention, Tweak suggested, the Gut G. I built it to travel in water and on land, just like a giant salamander. The ship had sturdy legs for walking on ground and a special tank for carrying large creatures. With no time to spare, the guff was loaded with kelp cakes and equipment and the octonauts set up for the park. The crews journeyed up to the shore through a forest and over rolling hills. When they reached Donkey's Pond, a crippled goldfish shared his story with the crew. At first I was the same size as all the other goldfish, but then I got bigger and bigger now there's not enough room for me here. Or us. Captain Monocles comforted their new friend. Everyone is different. Some of us grow a little and some a lot, he said. We'll help you find a larger pond, one with space for you to swim. Just then an old koi fish spoke up. I've heard of tales of a hidden ocean where giants swim. To find it you must head east and follow the rocky river to where it meets the clouds. The octonauts thanked their wise koi and set off on their quest. As they travelled, Donkey continued to grow. When they finally reached the river, he was too big even for the ship. In the water, Peso came out to measure Donkey's astonishing size. Shellington studied his shimmering scales and noted that they were looking more and more like armoured plates. Further down the river, the current suddenly turned into rapids and the waves crashed wildly against the tall banks. Dunk and the octonauts were jostled left and right. We can't take any more of this, Captain Barnacle shouted as he struggled to steer. I'm losing control of the Gup G. Ahead, the river seemed to disappear into the sky. It was a waterfall. Yeah, we're going to crash, Quasi cried as the Gup fell over the edge towards the sharp rocks below. But just at the last moment, the strong jaws clamped onto the ship. Donkey twisted round with all his might and pushed the octonauts away from the rocks. And through the rushing water, the crew found themselves floating in the calm of a tunnel behind the waterfall. Donkey had saved them. Further ahead, the tunnel opened to a vast underground ocean lit by dazzling crystals. The crew gasped in awe. Gigantic fish swam slowly before them and large plants covered the seabed. Was this the oceans of giants? Cautiously, the octonauts left their ship to explore. These fish look familiar, Shellington said excitedly. They remind me of the fossils I've been studying. While the crew were busy spotting creatures, Donkey had a surprise of his own. Giant fish that looked just like him. Primeval thalassic species, primordial marine fori. Of course, Donkey isn't a goldfish, he's a living fossil, a kind that no one has ever seen before. He could be related to this ancient fish. Professor Inkling pulled out his book to explain. Living fossils are plants and animals that haven't changed for millions of years, sometimes since the time of the dinosaurs. There are so many prehistoric creatures down here. Where are we? Dashi studied her octomap. According to the locator, we're right where Reba began, she gasped. This ocean is under Donkey's pond in the park, just far, far, far below. Donkey's egg must have drifted up through a crack in the rock and up to the pond above, Shellington suggested. Later, as new friends, big and small, swam up to greet them, Donkey waved his fins and tossed his tail happily. There's plenty of room here for me, he said. The octonauts stayed on for a giant party. Everyone enjoyed humongous kelp cakes and drank gigantic cups of kelp juice. 
When it was time to head back to the octopod, Captain Barnacles asked Spunky, Will you be all right here? There are lots of really big fish around. Don't worry about me, Spunky answered cheerfully. I'm still growing. The end.